Hey everyone, so Panther decided, oh no, now he's getting grumped. Now he's just like, let me go. I've been sitting here for so long. I've been like taking pictures of him and he's been so chill and now his patience has worn out. He's usually pretty good about stuff like that though. It's kind of ridiculous. He'll be back. As they always do whenever I try to make a video. Um, so I'm going to do another part of my enormous 40 question FAQ right now. Uh, so yeah, last time I left off with question number three. So now I will do... Let's say I will estimate that I will do 4, 5, and 6 at least. Um, we shall see. So, question number 4, doubt and transition. And this question is usually on the lines of, is there anything that you um, regret, I guess, or doubted while going into transition? Is there anything you doubt now about transition or at the time? Um, when I was first going into the process, there was a lot of, I had a lot of doubt. However, it mostly stemmed from my family. Like, to be quite honest, my initial thoughts were, I'm, like, after I'd done all my research and I was just, like, resolved that this is something that I had to do, my, the only thing, and I remember telling people this, the only thing holding me back was the fact that I had such an integrated relationship with my parents. Um, that isn't to say that I get along, especially with my parents, because I feel like we are kind of, disconnecting in a lot of ways just because I don't tell them a lot of things um that's not like they're wonderful people I couldn't ask for better parents um it's just not the relationship I have with them it's kind of hard to explain um so yeah I mean I really feared telling my parents I was convinced that if like I, I didn't think that they would kick me out um that was a fear but I didn't think that they would kick me out um, however, I knew that it would cause a rift, and it, it has. Um, I have more or less lost my relationship that I did have with my family under the guise of being female, and I'm now trying to build a new relationship that's taking time, and it is slowly happening bit by bit by bit. Um, but I, I, did, I did lose that along the way, so that was a huge part of my doubt. I also have doubts... Um, along with a lot of the medical risks of tea, which I knew and long-term hormone use, especially in transsexuals, is not very well studied at all. Doctors simply don't have any long-term studies to go off if they don't know um, the long-term risks. They can estimate, um, but these studies just haven't been done in trans people. Um, so that was a big concern because I am someone who likes to know all the facts before I jump into something. So not knowing that fact, it was kind of um, a bit unnerving. But then after thinking about it for a while, I just decided that I could not go on living the way I was. Um, and that it was indeed a risk I had to take. Um, so yeah, I mean, like those are really my only two sources of doubt. Once, Once I... Once I had my so-called epiphany, um, which was more of a process of epiphanies, but once things started to click, it became impossible for me to go back. Um, it just, it wasn't an option for me. It wasn't on the table anymore. So my doubts weren't very much in terms of my identity. My doubts were in terms of how things would work out with my family and my health and all that, more of the logistics of it. Question number five, and this is a pretty big one. I won't be able to cover all of it, I'm sure, but um, how do you deal with bullying? And I just want to be clear first that if it's any sort of physical bullying or if it's anything that ha any sort of harassment that happens on a regular basis, um, if it's any threat of violence, you should tell somebody. And um, this isn't, you know, in the after school special, you tell somebody. It's if you're being threatened. Or just constantly harass. Tell somebody. Um, it might be the easiest way to take care of it and the most effective way to take care of it. Just generally letting other people know that it's happening um, is probably the, one of the best responses you can give. Um, in terms of online bullying, don't respond. Um, again, if it's something that's happening all the time, if it's really, if it's if it's really bad and it's really personal, it's really intrusive and if there's any sort of death threat, let people know. Screen cap it, actually, and tell somebody that it's happening um, so that you have proof as well. And 
I mean, there have been sort of lawsuits over this kind of thing, so um, people take it pretty seriously. Um, but I mean, over like just generally, if it's like you suck or something like that, or you know, anything like that, just ignore it. It doesn't even warrant a response. I leave a lot of the negative because I get a lot of negative comments, um, and I leave them all up because I think it's important for other people to see them, just um, to compare. Because, I mean, everyone gets negative comments. I'm not ashamed that I get negative comments because I just understand now that they're going to happen. Um, and regardless of whether or not they're warranted, they're going to happen. Because somebody's bored on a Sunday and they're just like, You suck, uh, next page. You suck too. Um, it's just what some people do. Um, in terms of dealing with bullying on a more day-to-day -day level, like if somebody says something to you or insults you, um, I found the best way to deal with it is just, you know, if somebody has said to you, oh, you know, your new, your, uh, your shirt makes you look stupid, then my response to that would probably be something like, okay, and I'd probably just keep walking or just keep talking to the person, because what that, I mean, that's just, a, it's, it shuts down the conversation. If I were to fight back and be like, no, it's like, no, it's not. It's better than your shirt. Then I'm starting a discourse with this person, which is what they wanted. They wanted for, they wanted me to react and be like, you're, you suck, you know, shut up. They wanted that reaction. Um, if I just sort of act like if I respond with something neutral, like, okay, that was weird. Like, don't say that was weird, but if you just sort of keep talking and give them a, that was weird look, then they're essentially left accountable because, I mean, they're, it's essentially like, uh, like they're the person who threw the stone. As soon as you throw the stone back, they, I mean, they have this whole war going. If they just throw the stone and it hits the side of your house and you just sort of, all right, and I mean, what they want is a response. They don't want you to just continue watching TV. Um... I'm sorry if that's a little bit hard to explain. It's it's just a realization I came to that um, the best reaction is often to call attention to what was said through a lack of response. And um, a lot of people will try to respond by being witty. And if you couldn't do that, if you, if you, some people have like this uncanny ability to just turn anything on the other person and make them look like an idiot. But if you don't feel confident doing that, or if you can't do that, um, just a, a neutral response I found has worked about the same way. Uh, number six is sexism and misogyny. And, um, there is a perception out there that um, trans men are giving in to misogyny and are misogynists, um, because we sort of betrayed the team, so to speak, and we gave in to the masculine idea, ideal, and, uh, penis envy and whatever, whatever you think of it, but to me that just, that's, that is so hurtful because I would consider myself a feminist, or at least a feminist ally, depending on what your definition of feminism is. Um, some people believe that men can't be feminists, um, in which case I would consider myself an ally. But either way, um, I did not transition because I hated girls, or I hated women, or I hated being a... I hated the state of being female. I hated... I didn't, I didn't transition because I hated a female body at all. I just wasn't female and I tried for years to fit into that to to be a woman but I wasn't and there was even you know a masculine identified female it just it none of it worked for me and um it is something that's so hard to explain to someone who's never experienced that but um for me it wasn't it wasn't just uh defecting it was just like I tried to I just the fact of the matter was at the end of the day and the crux of it all was just that I wasn't a woman and I wanted to be that would be so much easier it'd be so amazingly like so much easier and so much less expensive if I had just been a woman and um then then I could just 
stayed and it could have been in the right body and I wouldn't have spent $10,000 on surgery so far and I wouldn't be taking hormones and um, I'd still have the same relationship with my family and all that um, but I wasn't a woman and um, that is just basically how I sum it all up And the second that question, the second half of that question being how has transition changed the changed the lives of those around me? Um, I feel like I'm able to relate to people around myself better, and the general consensus consensus from a lot of people I think is that they're able to do that with me a lot easier. Um, there, I, I mean, aside from my family, which I can I would consider another issue because that is another issue. Um, I I think that people are generally like it I it really hasn't changed a lot for my friends. Um yeah, I like Valdrian, I think she she summed it up the best when we were we were talking recently and she commented on how much I had changed um for the better. And she said something like, you know, I I knew I knew this girl and she she was pretty cool um and then she became this other girl who was bitch and I didn't like her very much and then um then there was Lucas and everything was fine and she said something along those lines and it was just it was really interesting to think about cuz there was this sort of mid area where I was so sick of acting the like my acting out was just so horrible and I think it it put a huge dent in a lot of the relationships that I had with a lot of people around me. So I'm happy that most of those, I think, have been sort of um, repaired over time. Um, and I think a lot of people understand why I had acted the way I did. Um, but yeah, I mean, it just doesn't seem like there have been any major changes in the like the lifestyles of those around me or even like my own lifestyle um like this is essentially the way I was meant to be and I think that the people around me would more or less agree with that